Greetings, traveler. Welcome to the magical citadel of Endymion. You've arrived in good time. Our greatest servant of our Lord Endymion has returned to us. As shall our Lord Electromite. And together, we will be able to strike down our enemies. Have you come to learn the way of the spell counter? Very well. Then let us... begin. What's going on guys? My name is Lars and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile where today we are going to be talking about Endymion, my absolute favorite deck of all time. Now Servant of Endymion just came off the limited list. She was limited to one since January of 2020. She is now legal to play at three copies in the deck and it is a massive consistency boost to Endymion. While I don't think Pendulums are probably the best meta call right now with Kashtira likely to take the forefront of the meta and they can block off your zones, it makes it a bit rough to consider a pendulum deck right now. All Cash Tier has to do is block off one of your scales and it kind of shuts down any pendulum deck. Endymion can sort of work around this with the ability to be able to special summon a monster from the deck or the hand or the extra deck just by having one of them and having three spell counters on each. It's still a rough call because if Cash Tier blocks off both your pendulum zones during games two and three, you're kind of up shit's creek without a paddle. But I sure as hell am gonna do whatever I can to try and break this deck as much as possible because it is my absolute favorite deck to play with. I'm actually working on quite a few variants right now, but this is the one that I've been actually playing with, and I'm going to just explain each and every single one of the cards, kind of elaborate what my line of thinking is, and if you guys have any questions about the deck, leave it in the comment section down below. Also, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Guys, if you enjoy videos like this, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it, and without further ado, let's get in to the deck profile. All right, guys, so here is the current deck list, and we're just going to jump right into it. Starting off, we have three copies of Endymion, the Mighty Master of Magic. His pendulum effect is that you can remove six spell counters from your side of the field and special summon him from the pendulum zone. Then count the number of cards you control that can have a spell counter and then destroy up to that many cards on the field. And if you do place spell counters on this card equal to the number of cards destroyed. His monster effect is that once per turn when a spell or trap card if, or effect is activated as a quick effect, you can return one card you control with a spell counter to the hand. And if you do negate the activation and then if you do destroy it, then you can place the same number of spell counters on him that the return card had. And then if he's destroyed while he has a spell counter by battle, only by battle, then you can add one normal spell from your deck to your hand. That's something that doesn't come up too often, but it's just something you want to keep in mind. Next, we have three copies of Reflections of Endymion. Each time a spell card is activated, place one spell counter on this card when that spell resolves. And then you can remove three spell counters from this card, special summon both this card from your pendulum zone and one monster from your hand that you can place a spell counter on. These effects apply to each of the Endymion cards. Reflection, special summons from the hand. Servant, special summons a monster that you can place a spell counter on from the deck. And then Magister special summons a monster from the extra deck that you can place a spell counter on. But back to Reflection, her monster effect is that you can only special summon Reflection of Endymion once per turn, so you can summon multiples if you have one of these in hand. If this card is special summoned, you can target one card your opponent controls and one card you control with a spell counter, except this card. Return that opponent's card, also your card, to the hand, then place the same number of spell counters on this card that your return card had. When this card with a spell counter is destroyed by battle, you can add one Endymion card from your deck to your hand. So similar to the Mighty Master, she has the same effect when destroyed by battle. You get able to add an Endymion card from your deck to your hand. Just something, again, to keep in mind. Now, a really cool interaction is with Selene is that during your opponent's turn, you can remove three spell counters as a quick effect to special summon a spellcaster from your hand or graveyard. If Reflection is already in your hand or graveyard, you can use Selene's effect, summon, and then bounce your opponent's card. It's just something that people don't see coming. They might see a field of negates, and they're trying to bait out each of the negates, but this is kind of like your ace in the hole. Next up, we have three copies of Servant of Endymion, the best card in the deck and finally been released from the limited list. Like Reflection, she has three spell counters that she can collect and then special summons a monster that you can place a spell counter on from the deck. So this is how you're typically going to grab Mythical Beast, Jackal King, or Endymion. Kind of depends on your matchup, but typically you're probably going to go for Jackal King. Then her monster effect, you can only special summon Servants of Endymion once per turn. This card with a spell counter can attack directly. Once per opponent's turn is a quick 
effect, you can discard one card, place one spell counter on each card you control that you can place a spell counter on. If this card in the monster zone is destroyed, you can place this card in your pendulum zone, then place the same number of spell counters on it that it had as a monster. The next card, Magister of Endymion. So we run two copies. You can run three. I think three is a little bit cloggy in this deck. Um, he's not as good as Reflection or as Servant, but regardless, his pendulum effect, you can remove three spell counters and then special summon from the extra deck one monster that you can place a spell counter on. His monster effect is kind of ridiculous. When this card declares an attack, you can place one spell counter on it, and then once per your opponent's turn as a quick effect, you can remove three spell counters from your field, special summon one monster from your deck that you can place a spell counter on. If this card in the monster zone is destroyed, you can place this card in your pendulum zone, then place the same number of spell counters on it that it had as a monster. So this is kind of the inverse or the reflection of Servant of Endymion. They both have similar effects, it's just swapped. Either way, he's a really good card, especially after on turns two and three. Really solid card. You can actually get him off during turn one as well, but it's just not as common. So we don't really need him as much as we want Servant or even Reflection. Next up, we have two copies of Mythical Beast Jackal King. Uh, his pendulum effect really doesn't matter in this. If we were running the Mythical Beast package, then we can actually do something with it. But in this case, we're not running Master Cerberus. It's his monster effect that's really important. Each time a spell card is activated, you place two spell counters on him, and then once per turn, when an opponent activates a monster effect, as a quick effect, you remove two spell counters from your field, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Really, really solid negation. Easy to drag out of the deck with Servant, or to get out of the hand with Reflection. Just an amazing card. Next up, we have three copies of Chronograph Sorcerer. His pendulum effect during your main phase, you can destroy this card, and if you do, take one time Gazer Magician from your hand or deck, and either place it in your pendulum zone, or special summon it. You can only use this effect once per turn. Time Gazer Magician is here. Typically don't need him as a scale or very, very rarely, but really it's an extra spell caster on the field to be able to link climb or to go into synchro shenanigans. His monster effect, if a card or cards you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. Then you can special summon one monster from your hand. You can banish this card you control plus four monsters from your hand, field, and or graveyard. One each of a pendulum, exceed, synchro, or infusion in their name. Special summon one Supreme King's Ark. Obviously that effect doesn't really apply. Next up, Time Gazer. Really not much to say here unless there's a magician in the other pendulum zone his scale becomes four and that is monster effect each turn the first card in your pendulum zone that would be destroyed by opponent's card effect it is not destroyed generally speaking we're not really using for his monster effect or anything like that we're using him more as an extra spell caster that we can easily bring onto the field next up two copies of harmonizing magician her pendulum effect all monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for each face up magician pendulum monster with different names in your extra deck and the most important thing the monster effect cannot be special summoned from the extra deck cannot be used as material for fusion, synchro, or exceed summon unless all other materials are magician pendulum monsters. When this card is pendulum summoned from the hand, you can special summon one magician pendulum monster from your deck in defense position except harmonizing magician, but negate its effects. Also banish it when it leaves the field. And of course, you can only use it once per turn. You can either drag out a level 4 to be able to do a level 8 synchro summon in the form of Borlode Savage, or you could even go so far as to get Time Gazer Magician and go into Arcanite Magician, which has pretty much unlimited pops for as many spell counters as you have on the field. Or what you can do, or what I like to do in this scenario, if I have Endymion or Reflection, I will special summon Dragon Color Magician, which is a level 7. And then we can do the overlay into Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon, link it away, and then summon Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. Harmonizing Magician is just really good because it's going to drag out a body from the deck, so that way we can either do Exceeds Shenanigans, or Synchro, or Fusion. Whatever we have to do, Harmonizing is amazing. And then we have the rest of the Magician package. I have one copy of Performer Pal, Celestial Magician, when exactly one face-up fusion synchro exceeds monster you control that was special summoned from the extra deck is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can special summon that destroyed monster, then destroy this card. The monster effect during your main phase, if this card was normal or special summon this turn, you can apply the following effects for the rest of this turn based on the other monsters you currently control. So if you control a fusion, this card can attack directly. If you control a synchro, your opponent cannot activate monster effects. And if you control it exceeds, this card's attack becomes double its original attack, and then pendulum, which is more than likely what's going to be on the field, during the end phase, add one pendulum monster from your deck to your hand. And of course, you can only do it once per turn. So this is an easy way to be able to have a follow-up for your next turn. So if you want to grab another Servant of Endymion from the deck, anything really, whatever is required of you for your next turn as a follow-up. Next up, one copy of Dragger Caller Magician. This one is typically only used because of its level. It's not really being used for any of its effects or anything like that. So, but just to go over its effects, Pendulum, once per turn, you can target one face-up monster on the field. It becomes Dragon-type until the end of the opponent's turn 
one even if this card leaves the field and then a monster effect once per turn you can make this card become dragon type until the end of this turn a monster that was fusion synchro or x seed summon using this card on the field as material gains this effect if this card battles a dragon type monster this card's attack becomes double its original attack during the damage step only next up here we have black fang magician uh pendulum effect once per turn you can target one face up monster your opponent controls its attack becomes half its current attack until the end of this turn then destroy this card his monster effect if this card is destroyed by battle or a card effect you can target one dark spellcaster type monster in your graveyard special summon it it's not something that comes up terribly often but it's still a really solid effect and he's got a good attack and a good level for what we're doing and a great scale next up one copy of purple poison magician for pendulum effect once per turn if your dark spellcaster type monster battles before damage calculation you can activate this effect that monster gains 1200 attack until the end of the damage step then destroy this card her monster effect if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect you can target one face up card on the field and destroy it that does come up from time to time she's got a great scale all of these cards are really good uh, i love the magician package also because of its spell cards as well that just molds really nicely with the endymion cards next up here we have the only regular effect monster in the deck and that's blue boy if this card is normal summon or flip face up add one spellbook card from your deck to your hand so you see we run a small spellbook package i don't think this is anything new for anyone who's played endymion we got blue boy we got spellbook of secrets and then of course we ended on spellbook of knowledge to be able to draw two cards so nice little draw engine nothing really else to say here now we move on to the other spell cards in the deck which we have of course spell power mastery three copies this is the searcher of the deck adds one endymion card from your deck to your hand then you can count the number of spell power masteries and spell power grasps you can control and and or have in your graveyard then place that many spell counters among cards you control that you can place a spell counter on obviously it's a three of in the deck next up three copies of allure of darkness again this is more draw power into the deck we want to draw as much as we can to be able to place spell counters and to get as many monsters into our hand and then onto the field as possible we run enough darks in here that it makes it all worthwhile and i prefer this over desires next up here we have two copies of pen call discard one card add two magician pendulum monsters with different names from your deck to your hand also until the end of your opponent's next turn add to the card resolves magician cards in your pendulum zones cannot be destroyed by card effect this is how you're easily going to be able to grab harmonizing and then we have one copy of duelist alliance to be able to search out one of the pen calls in the deck as well more spell counters and more searching one copy of instant fusion this is how we can make sure that all of our plays are going to go through we have a millennium eyes restrict here just for that purpose after you do some link shenanigans you're going to be able to special summon him from the graveyard and actually keep him on the field instead of just going to the graveyard during the end phase of the turn one copy of upstart goblin again more draw power one copy of Into the Void, Draw Power. One copy of Terraforming to be able to search out our field spell is Secret Village of the Spellcasters. An amazing field spell. If only you control a spellcaster monster, your opponent cannot activate spell cards. If you control no spellcaster monsters, you cannot activate spell cards. The whole deck is spellcaster. You're not going to have any problem making sure that your opponent cannot play one third of their deck. Now we're going to move on to the extra deck. And I don't have this in any particular order, so I'm just going to read it off as it is. One copy of Cross Sheep. This is really nice to be able to link into if you've already made Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon. Cross Sheep can actually summon out Millennium Eyes Restrict or it can summon out Blue Boy from the graveyard and that way you can continue the link climb and go into Selene or Appaloosa. Next up we have Crowley. If this card is link summoned, you can reveal three spellbook cards with different names from your deck and your opponent randomly picks one of them to add to your hand. Also shuffle the rest into your deck. Each turn, a one level five or higher spellcaster monster you normal summon can be summoned without tributing. Not something that ever comes up. Either way, this is how you're going to get a hold of your spellbook engine. You want to either be able to grab Blue Boy or Secrets it kind of sucks when you grab knowledge off of it, but sometimes you can make it work. Next up, of course, we have one copy of Beyond the Pendulum. Absolutely awesome card. It's no Electromite, but it's still really good. If this card is Link Summon in the extra monster zone, you can pay 1,200 life points, add one Pendulum monster from your deck to your hand. But for the rest of this turn, unless you Pendulum Summon after this effect resolves, you cannot activate monster effects, and the effects of any cards in your Pendulum zones are negated. If two monsters with different original levels are Pendulum Summon at the same time to the zones this card points to, you can target two cards on the field and destroy them so it's a really solid card but you need to make sure that you use it wisely because it will shut off your scales if you already have spell counters on any of the endymion cards while they're in the scale it'll completely take them off you just got to be careful whenever you're using this card then we have one copy of daybreaker if he's link summon place one spell counter on it gains 300 attack for each spell counter on it you can only use each effect at once per turn if a spellcaster monster or monsters is special summon to a zone this card points to place one spell counter on this card you can remove two spell counters from this card then target one card on the field and destroy it then of course we have two copies of Celine, queen of the master magicians if this card is link summon place spell counters on this card equal to the number of spells on the field and in the graveyards while an endymion card is on the field your opponent's monsters cannot target this card for attacks once per turn during the main phase as a quick effect
deck, you can remove three spell counters from your field, special summon one spellcaster monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position to your zone this card points to. She's an absolutely amazing card. Definitely run more than one. You're going to want at least two. In some circumstances, I kind of wish I had three, but I think it works perfectly fine with just the two. Next up, one copy of Appaloosa. I don't think I really need to explain this. This is just negate central. One copy of Access Code Talker. One copy of Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Just to elaborate on what she does, because I don't see many people using her. You can only use one monster your opponent controls as material to link summon this card. If this card is link summon, you can negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls. This link summon card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects unless they target this card. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect that includes special summoning a monster or monsters from the graveyard, quick effect, you can negate the activation. She's a really powerful boss monster, and just not something I go into terribly often. Next up here are the Exceeds monsters, one copy of Abyss Dweller. We have a few level fours in the deck, so it's really not terribly difficult, especially with Harmonizing Magicians. You can drag on another level four from the deck, and then you can go into Abyss Dweller. Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon is in here, more or less just to be the bridge to get to Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. Then we have one copy of Arcanite Magician. If this card is Synchro Summon, place two spell counters on it. This card gains 1,000 attack for each spell counter on it. You can remove one spell counter from your field, then target one card your opponent controls, destroy that target. So for as many spell counters that you have on the field, that's how many cards you can blow up with Arcanet Magician. Then we have one copy of Borlode Savage Dragon. Obviously, more negates, real easy to get into. One copy of Millennium Eyes Restrict, of course. This is the instant fusion target. And then one copy of Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, which is another Omni Negate. Now, moving on to the side deck here. I have three copies of Comungus. Now, the reason that this is in here is because it's actually searchable in the deck with Small World. If you're looking to add Kaijus yes. into the deck, this is actually the best way to do it. Now we have three copies of Book of Eclipse. This is for the Cash Tira matchup. It's a really good card. You have to run it. Three copies of Dark Ruler No More. This is just blanket negation if I'm going second. Three copies of Small World. I actually have been testing this card a lot in different Endymion builds. It works great. This is actually something I might consider adding into the deck full time. Maybe as a two of. I'm not sure about three. Three seems to be just a bit too much, but two seems to be a good number for the deck. And then, of course, we had three copies of Cosmic Cyclone for the back row hate. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and I'll catch you all next time. Later.